We've been monitoring 64 graphics cards over the course of a year and checking prices along the way. We use eBay as our reference point to see what cards are currently selling for, and we reference 3 Mark Time Spy to get a good idea of what kind of value to expect with each of these cards at these price points. Again, we have three other videos on this topic, so if you want to hear more about the explanations to how we create the graphs you're about to see, just check those out. I'll have them linked below. For now, what I want to preface this video by saying is that news is looking pretty good. I mean, we're seeing a substantial drop in prices. Now, do I think this trend will continue at a linear rate? More than likely, no. If history has anything to say about it, uh, the prices will definitely begin to level off, sort of taper off until we get to that steady equilibrium at a much lower price point than what we're used to. I don't think we'll return to MSRP lows, but we're going to get pretty close to that, I think, at this current trajectory by the end of the year, which, I mean, that, that's that's fantastic. Uh, then again, I've been wrong before, and you just never really know what's going to come up. So we're going to talk all about this. I've got tons of data to show you, tons of, well, actually not tons of graphs, but a lot of data in each of these graphs I'm going to show you, and uh, it should give you a pretty good idea of where things are headed. All right, you ready? Stay with me. LG Tone Free Earbuds blend comfort, cleanliness, and crisp sound with active noise cancellation. The case sports a unique UV nano feature designed to kill 99.9% .9 of bacteria on the speaker mesh, and it only requires five minutes of UV exposure to work its magic. Tone Earbuds also utilize a medical grade hypoallergenic ear gel for reduced skin irritation and optimal comfort. And of course, enjoy clear and spatial sound fine-tuned by Meridian for up to 24 hours with the aid of case charging. And at that, just five minutes of charging alone will give you an hour of playtime. You can even use the Tone app to sync up various modes to both noisy and quiet situations, ensuring call quality isn't compromised. And if you need to connect to an aux port, LG's plug-in wireless feature lets you connect where wireless alone otherwise wouldn't. Learn more about LG Tone earbuds via the link below. So let's jump straight into it. And I'm not going to spend a ton of time in this video talking about what all of these numbers mean, because again, I've done that in the past two or three videos in this mini series. Uh, you'll see the card names here to the far left, starting with the RTX 3090, RX 6900 XT, and so on, all the way down here to the GT710. These are ranked by, I believe at this point, uh, score. And this is a 3D Mark times by mean graphics card score, which you can look up in the 3D Mark database. The next column over is MSRP. This one should be pretty self-explanatory. Again, it's just going to be a price that you can look up. And the older cards will obviously be a bit it's it's not really a fair comparison here because the older cards, right, are going to be priced fairly high because at the time when they were first released, that was a good deal. Right? The general trend of tech is that uh, you get a lot more value for your money. At least that should be the the, the trend of tech. Uh, so you'll see that these uh, newer cards obviously have a much better value overall than these older cards where the colors and the values start to skew more toward the red. In this case, red is bad, okay? So if you see red or even yellow... These are cards that you don't want to consider. Now, these values are relative to each other. They're not relative across different points in time. So at this snapshot, at MSRP, when each of these cards existed, you can see this is how they all stack up against each other. There's some pretty obvious ones in here. For example, the original GTX Titan, right, with a $1,000 MSRP when it was first launched, gave us a score of 2868. Now, back in the day, 2868 was a great score. But now it's it's pretty pretty bad, right? An R9 380X actually beats the original GTX Titan, and it costs like one fourth the price. So uh, that's why we're getting a much higher value here uh, than the Titan, right? 13.19 versus 2.87. So that's what this first chart means. The second chart here to the right uh, basically just categorizes these or, or orders them, I should say, uh, based on value. So you can see that the most valuable card at the time I took all this data was the RTX 3060 Ti, and this again uses MSR. P. Uh, I do not have the 3060 in here. I don't have the 3050 in here. Uh, there were a few cards that did not exist when, by the time this just chart was started, again, a little over a year ago. Uh, so that's why they're not here, just in case you're wondering. A few people asked about that uh, in the last video. And then this third chart here is graphics score values at ESP. Now I'll explain how I did this and then we're gonna jump straight to the March 2022 prices because I know you wanna see how things have changed. So here's what's going on. You have ESP here instead of MSRP, and ESP stands for just a made up acronym I came up with, eBay sale price. And what I do is take the most recent 10 graphics card sales on eBay, which you can look up, just click on the advanced tab at the top right, click sold listings and type in the SKU you're looking for. Uh, and I take the 10 most recent that don't involve 
just a parts only sale or a broken card or just like the, the cooler of a card, right? It has to be an actual working card. Those 10 most recent sales, regardless of SKU, are then averaged together and that gives you this price here for each of these cards. So you can see the RTX 3060 Ti in April 2021, ESP was $1,300. These Time Spice scores, again, are the exact same that we saw in the previous two charts. This didn't change. In fact, this hasn't changed even in March 2022. I know the score average probably did change a bit just because more people will be testing, right? The longer that these uh, benchmarks are out, the longer these cards are on the market. But uh, I wanted to stick with the same score just so that it could be a, a bit more comparative. Uh, we don't expect driver updates to like massively improve discrete card performance. And if they did, uh, shame on the company that released a really crappy driver to begin with. Uh, GTX 650 Ti, you can see it was $450 on average on eBay and uh, with a score of 4707, right? They gave us a value of 10. So this card was a slightly better value at the time than a 3060 Ti, which is freaking weird because usually cards in the 1650 range, 1660 range are a lot better value than the much more expensive cards. But now let's move on to March, 2022. So this is where the magic starts happening. See, first off, these two cards up top here, the, the same two that we looked at earlier, the 3060 Ti and the 1650 Super, $700 and $250 respectively. These are average, again, most recent 10 sale prices on eBay. That is fantastic. These prices are not super competitive yet with respect to MSRP, but they are much closer to MSRP than what we are used to. Again, I'll give you a reminder, these scores are exactly the same from 3D Mark Time Spy. We have 700 and 250 here, but if we scroll all the way up, you can see 1300 and 450. So basically half the price that you would have paid a year ago, right? In April of 2021. That is, uh, <laughs> That's progress, my friends. Now it's time for the graphs, the visuals. I think you're gonna enjoy this section because you can really see the, the trend change over the last year. So this here is a scatter plot of value versus score. Score is 3D Mark Time Spy here at the bottom on the X axis and value includes the 3D Mark Time Spy score as the performance side of this, but then divided by price. And in this case, price is MSRP listed up top. Now I included a trend line here and we can see that it has a positive slope, which indicates that at least on average, the newer, more powerful cards tend to be better values. And that's what we would expect, and again, because tech should over time um, increase the value of the component being sold. Uh, but we also have these outliers like the GT710 that are skewing things right downward on the left side of the graph. Like this card is a horrible value. Again, a very low 3D Mark score, and uh, it's actually a fairly high price for what you're getting. And it's kind of a bare bones alternative for those who don't have integrated graphics. See, the GT1030 is uh, also a pretty horrible card, but uh, it, it has a much higher value because it does tend to score a lot better. So we've got this trend. You can see the more expensive cards here on the far right, the 6800 XT and 3080 are uh, above that trend line, but the 6900 XT and the 3090 are below it. And that's because these cards, while they are only slightly better uh, from a performance standpoint than the 3080 and 6800 XT, at least according to the 3D Mark Time Spy uh, database, uh, they are much more expensive, significantly more expensive than the marginal performance increase that you find these uh, offer in, again, that 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark. So uh, that's why these are below. They're just, they're worse values, uh, but they are among the best cards around. So that's why we see this general positive slope here. Just wanted to explain that pretty much every card we've logged over the past year is included in the scatter pulp. This is kind of pointless, right? Because you can't buy any of these right now, for the most part, at MSRP. It just doesn't exist. So what we ended up switching to in, I gotta remember what month it was. It was April 2021 was a chart that looked like this. And this is just awful. So I'm just gonna go back and forth here so that you can see, right, how obviously awful this is. These cards are pretty much all clustered very tightly around the 10 to 15 uh, uh, marks on the value side on the Y axis. Then we pivot back to MSRP and you can see there's just a much wider range of cards to choose from. Obviously you could buy use and there are plenty of use cards that are uh, relatively bad value, but there are also plenty of used cards like the RX 460 and RX 470 that are great value cards, right? And these are fairly affordable as well. Uh, same goes for the, the newer stuff. The RTX 3060 is among the best value cards out there. And I imagine if we had the 3060, uh, the regular 3060, not the TI uh, included here, it would be even higher. It should be around the, the TI skew. So uh, you, can, you can just see how much worse things get in April, it, it just it, it like completely skews value downward. And this is bad for the consumer. What this effectively means is that you and I will be spending a lot more money, right? To get the same score for the same card. 
And that, of course, reduces value because the only changing variable is price. Again, that's in the denominator, so that's gonna skew everything downward. And uh, we're using ASP, remember, we're not using MSRP. These are eBay sale prices, uh, most recent 10 sales on average, uh, and uh, this was taken in April. Now, let's move over to August, and you can see, you know, it got better. Kind of, sort of. Everything shifted upward. The trend line also uh, flattened just a bit, still a negative slope, but uh, it did noticeably flatten a tad, and uh, it was shifted upward as well. So better value in August 2021. We were on a good track. Now let's move on to November, and uh, more bad news. First off, our trend line shifted downward completely, which suggests that you're getting uh, worse value per card, and uh, this actually looks a lot, <laughs> a lot closer to April in 2021. You check that out. Very, very similar. Uh, a bit better than in April, but uh, much worse than in August. And of course, this being November, this is around the holidays, right? So folks were uh, looking for graphics cards for their new gaming PCs, and they realized that Amazon and Newegg and other, you know, third-party retailers that were selling these brand new uh, had all these cards listed for crazy prices. So they resorted to eBay. And uh, because there was more demand on eBay, uh, the sellers picked up on that and uh, maybe the, the cards were just bid higher, right? Because there were more bidders. And um, so, you know, that, that can also skew the prices downward, or sorry, skew the value downward, skew the prices upward, because again, price is in the denominator. So if price goes up, value drops. So this chart, it sucks, right? And we saw this, this was the third video that we posted and um, it was just more bad news, not much else to really say there. But there is light at the end of the tunnel, folks, and that is March, 2022. So again, here is November and here is March. Check that out. That is a significant shift in the trend line upward and well, just across the board. I mean, the entire cluster of cards that once was here is now much higher up. So you're somewhere in the 15 to 20 range now for value, whereas before you could expect eh, in general 10 to 15, right? If you're lucky, you get between 15 and 20. But a lot of those cards were the older cards that weren't as highly demanded. So the newer cards were most certainly in 10 to 15 range. And uh, now, right? They're at least 15, some of them even close to 20. I mean, heck, look at the GTX 1080, right? The GTX 1070 Ti, the 980 Ti is way up here near 25, which suggests this is a very good value relative to the other cards available here at this time. That's what I want you to remember about this value metric that we have here. Value here is just a relationship between one card and the other cards in this list at this current point in time. So the 980 Ti, the 780 Ti, the 1070 Ti, the GTX 1080, uh, even the 1080 Ti is a very good one. You can see we've got some lower end cards here. Uh, most, most of these are pretty old. The R9 380X, the RX 480, it looks like is in there. Uh, the Fury X, even the GTX 1070 is here, but the 1080 was a better value, at least as of uh, uh, the, the 1st of March. Uh, GTX 950 here. And you can see we've got RX 6800 XT, 6900 XT over here on the uh, far right. Um, the 6800 XT is the best value uh, for, for the new cards that are very, you know, very powerful. Um, the 2080 Ti was okay. The 3070 and the 6800, right? These cards are pretty much in line with the trend line itself. These I didn't find were still good deals. I think they're okay but uh, people were still asking pretty crazy sums of money for them. So I would wait on these, but uh, some of these older cards, I mean, if you want to jump back a generation or two, um, th these are you know, decent, right? They're, they're still not good. They're still higher than what you would have paid two years ago, but they're, they're, they're getting there. And, and that's all that I can really ask for at this point. We've been dealing with this crazy climate for so long. Now, one last chart just to show you how things have changed over time, right? This measures value, and I've just taken a number of cards here. I've highlighted some of them that I think are noteworthy uh, in different colors here at the bottom. You can see, for example, the RTX 3060 Ti, which is a, a newer card, right? Uh, There's a pretty horrible value. Uh, at the very beginning of the year, and then it became a slightly better value, and then it was a slightly better value than that in November, and then it shot up again pretty significantly uh, in March. Now, the 3060 Ti, if I recall correctly, is one of those cards that does have the low hash rate option. That low hash rate skew will obviously skew the data a bit because uh, those should be, at least in theory, slightly lower price uh, because they're not as desired by miners because they are effectively cut of their knees. Although there are apparently some workarounds and I haven't really gotten too deep into it lately because I don't, I don't really care about mining at all, but uh, that can affect this trend. That's one of the reasons why this card in particular has 
slowly but surely shot up in value over time because there are multiple SKUs. Uh, another one that uh, we called out earlier, the GTX 1080. So you can see this was an okay value before, and then it became a fairly decent value in August, but then it dropped back down in November. And again, around Christmas time, the 1080 is a pretty popular card, but then look at this, this huge shot upward, in March, it is now over 20 in the value department, which is a very good buy. Again, relative to other things you could buy in March, 2022. Now these trajectories, I do not expect to continue in this linear fashion. Uh, I expect as they approach MSRP, um, at least for the newer cards like the 3060, um, I expect that as they approach MSRP that they will start to level off. They will kind of taper off and then flatline at some point. Uh, usually when sellers just start mass panic selling, um, a lot of buyers will catch on because they've been subjected to these crazy prices for so long. And those buyers will buy multiple cards because they don't think it's going to last. And then sellers realize they did this too, too quickly. It was too premature. And they will raise prices again in accordance with that sudden influx of demand. Uh, so that's why these prices tend to just slowly level off over time. Um, I, will this continue in a linear trend? No, I don't think so. Again, that's just kind of another reason why I don't think it will. But uh it's, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just, it's basic pricing behaviors and, and consumer psychology associated with, with the way that the market has been. We obviously know that if these prices return to, to MSRP levels overnight, that there would be just a ton of people buying these cards. And that's why they don't do that, because sellers know that if they cut their prices by too much, then they'll just be taken advantage of, uh, much in the same way that buyers were kind of sort of taken advantage of. Funny how that works. The data is looking good. Mean value has definitely shot up. One more thing I want to show you before we close here. I have to scroll up a bit. This Excel spreadsheet lags like mess because there's so much data in it. And it's all on one sheet, so I kind of screwed myself there. Anyway, uh, you can see how the value has changed over time for each of these cards. Now, there are a few heroes that kind of shot up out of nowhere. Um, you'll see that the 1070 Ti, uh, at, at one point, it was kind of just in the middle here, a yellow value. Again, this is just relative to, to this point in time. So these aren't, you know, you can't cross these over with each other. Um, the conditional formatting is, is, is dependent on the column that the values are in. Uh, but the 1070 Ti has, has progressively gotten better. It got a little worse here in November. Uh, that's the one exception. But you can see now it's a relatively good value. Um, same with a few other cards here, the 1070, the regular 1070 is a pretty good value, although the 1070 Ti I found is a slightly better one. The RX 480 out of nowhere became a pretty decent value. These cards are pretty popular with miners, at least they were. So maybe this is just a result of miners flooding a ton of cards into the market because, uh, Crypto prices are all over the place, who knows? All of these prices here that you're seeing, um, not and not MSRP, but uh, ESP um, that we gather, these are all rounded to the nearest $50. So if it's somewhere around like 430 bucks on average, I just round it up to 450 just to keep things simple. Um, so there is a bit of variance there in value. And of course there are multiple SKUs out there, multiple versions of the same GPU, so to speak, right? You could buy an ASUS version of a card. A Strix card is gonna be more expensive than the bare bones ASUS version, right? Um, so all that's taken into account and some of it is just kind of by chance, right? If five Strix cards are included in that most recent 10 sale average, then that's gonna skew the price a bit upward. So we've got a lot of data in these charts and we'll be adding to it uh, again in the next three months or so to see if this trend downward in price continues. I hope it does. I really hope I'm not wrong in this case, but uh, we'll see. You know, with, with uh, the political tensions and other things happening right now, uh, demand for silicon, it's really never been higher because there's there's been a, sh a shortage for so long. So you just got all that pent up demand that's been backed up for so long. Um, it just, who knows? And then with Intel possibly making their way into this space at some point, that could be big as well. That could shape things up. So I, I'm, I'm curious how that's going to affect pricing. But uh, hopefully this shed a bit of light into the current story uh, regarding prices. If you've been kind of holding off and you can't hold off any longer, I mean, now's a better time than it would have been three or six months ago. But I still suggest you wait. If you can wait, wait a bit longer. I'd say another three to six months. We'll know for sure where these prices are headed. Um, if, they, if they flatline, right, and they're like this in July of 2022, then uh, yeah, maybe maybe buy something used on eBay. Um, still not gonna be a great value, but again, a lot better than what you would have paid. And um, if you can't hold out any longer, you know, <laughs> you gotta buy, right? If you wanna buy a card, just buy a card. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, if you bought one now, I wouldn't judge you for it. Heck, if you bought one six months ago and you had good justification for it, that's fine. If you had, a, a, you know, money burning a hole in your pocket, you just wanted to spend money, fine. You know, that's, that's your problem. It's your money. You can do what you want with it. But uh, smart money, the smart buy, if you're just gaming with your card, there's no real like utility for it besides entertainment. Um, I would wait just a bit longer. That's just me.
Uh, what do you guys think in the comment section below? Let me know. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you appreciate the data collected, I will have this all available to you once we get the, the kind of like full picture here. I don't want to publicize it yet and then add more data to it later. Uh, I want to have all the data for the entire right course of this mini series collected and then I'll publicize it so you guys can play around with it and see how things um, trended upward or downward over time. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, get subscribed. I'd appreciate that. Again, leave comments in, in the comment section below and I will catch you in the next one. <laughs> This, this video was a handful. <laughs> it, these videos always are. It's just, there's just a lot of data and I'm, I'm just anxious to share it all with you. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.